Hey guys, how's it going? Scott here from scottsbasslessons.com and I'm here today to teach you a absolutely killer riff, Forget Me Nots, played by Ready Freddy Washington and it was uh, obviously performed by Patrice Russian. It's a super, super cool riff for so many reasons. Obviously it's super funky, but there's other things that come into play like note length, um, using the thumb, it's quite thumb driven this. Um, there is index finger in it, but it's, you know, it's really thumb heavy. And, and the tempo as well, it's not that machine gun slap, you know, that... Um you know, that kind of thing. It's actually quite a, it's quite a laid back tempo, which is why I really like it. So it's the note length we're gonna be looking into, again, using the thumb because there's some tricky little passages in there as well. And just the, the whole vibe of the tune as well is really great. Um, it starts with a, let me just play it. Um, I'll just play it now just so you can hear it without the drum track, okay? It's in, it starts going to that F sharp, right? Two, three, four. So it's, it's, it's a really great groove. I was actually a little bit on top of the beat there, but it's that first phrase. It's just a really great phrase. It's the note length. It's the, the articulations of the notes as well. It's quite poppy. It, there's got some, there's a fair amount of force behind the pops. And they're really, they're really cut short. So really take note of the note length. If it's one, if there's one thing, well, there's a few things, but one of the things that I see bass players doing time and time again is not taking care of the note length, okay? When you play a note, when you take the note off is as important as the note itself, okay? So it's really, it's not. It's not that. Boom, bat, boom, gat. Think about it as a horn section. Do, da, mm, da. Tower of power, you know. Boom, bat, do, bat. That first phrase is, so it's just all thumb, and then the pluck, obviously, on the F sharp as well, the octave. So you just hammer on from the E to the F sharp. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Add in the plug, three, four, three, four, three, four. Make sure you're pulling that off short. And there's a little, wait. Okay. Just that little dead note there. And you get that by, I'm actually, after I play those F sharps, I'm taking my fingers off and I'm just holding the uh, holding the fingers over the strings but not fretting any of them. A really great exercise would just be to, just be to loop that round. Okay. And again, you're playing the D with the thumb. When it gets to the, the octave, the top D, again, it's real short. T, four. And here going from the, so. Again, take note of that note length. Okay, two, three, four. There's a little bit of, it's not. 
it. There's a little bit of daylight between those two notes. And again, this is utilizing the thumb and the hammer on. Four. Hear that daylight between the E's? Uh. Little bit of daylight. And then, let's just do that first bit with speed. Two, three, four. Three, four. Three, four. Three, four. Three, four. Okay, so once you've got that down, you've just got this last little bit on the end. The, the, essentially, the, the riff is exactly the same. It just goes around twice. The first time is second, different. Slightly at the end is different to the second time. And if you listen to the record, there doesn't seem to be any formula behind which one uh, Freddie uses. It seems to be, you know, how funky he's feeling. He's like, I'm feeling extra funky on this bar, so I'm going to put this little fill in. So it's... And that last bit is... B to C sharp. But it's not... It's... Okay, so you, what you're doing there is... Uh, 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 you're just bringing the... The... the you're holding down the note, but then you're just letting go of the tension. You're bringing it off the, off the fret. Okay. It's really hard to tell if uh, Freddie was going. Cluck, hammer on E to F sharp, and then back to the start. But I assume, guessing, listening to it very intensely, that I think he's using the, the thumb for the entire thing. E, hammer on the F sharp. Okay. And again, you can practice that on its own in a little groove. This is what I always recommend, guys, is if you, you shouldn't attack things, just the entire thing. You should break everything up that you're learning into tiny little bits of set, tiny little sections and work on them individually. When I was a kid, when I was 13, I used to practice classical guitar. I didn't used to practice classical. Well, I did used to practice classical guitar, but I, I used to study classical guitar. And, and one thing when you're, when you're learning really tough pieces, um, in, in a classical environment, uh, you, you have to do it sometimes not even a bar at a time. Sometimes you'll be practicing just like a little phrase, part of a measure, bar measure at a time. So that's what I try and get all my students to do when they're learning stuff like this, is like, don't try and do just a bad job of the whole thing, okay? Don't do a bad job of the entire thing. Do a great job of every little piece and then get that and push that together and that will make you, you know, that'll give you that killer riff and that killer sound. So again, don't do a bad job of the entire thing. Don't be sloppy about it. Make sure you learn each little part and then push them all together. Then you've got a killer sounding riff. So in the instance of the end of this, <clears throat> you can just practice like that, even to a slower tempo. Three, four. Okay, then you put it all together. So first we've got the F sharp bit. Three, four, D, E. And then we're at the top. So that's the first, the first section, right? The second bit's exactly the same. Except this bit. Okay, so we've got... Which is F sharp to G sharp. Okay. Uh. Three, four. Again, you can practice it over and over. Bring the tempo down. Two, 
three, four. Three, four. Ah. <laughs> three, four. Three, four. Now you can do it all with the thumb, or you can play index, thumb, thumb. Okay, and what I'm doing there is just hammering on. But make sure it doesn't do this. It's not, it's not swung. It's It's real straight, so make sure you don't swing it. Everybody always swings that thing. Even I swing it there. And then the next bit. It actually changes here, okay, so it goes. This is a little bit of a thumb workout for you, okay, so. I'm not sure how he, how he actually fingered it in terms of, you know, physicality. I can tell you what I did or do. I play from the B to the C, hammer on. E, I pluck it. B, uh, thumb for the C sharp. And then pluck that F sharp. Again, I'm looping it round. Four. So that bit in the rest of the riff sounds like this. Two, three, four. Okay, and then it just loops round. So let's do the two sections. One, two, three, four. Again, a little bit slower. Um, two, uh, one, two, three, four. Up that little bit in on the end. Here we go. <laughs> Again, guys, when you're practicing it with a drum track, it's feel is everything. Feel is everything. It's so easy to push with things like this, to push that time. You want to be really, really sitting on the, if there's, there's a few things you want to take from this lesson, right? You really want to sit in the pocket on the groove with the track. You know what I mean? You really need to sit in that pocket with it. Don't push it. Get the, get, you know, just bring it up on YouTube, play along with the original, try and cop Freddie's feel for that. So that's the first thing. Make sure that you're sitting on that groove and you're not pushing it. Um, the second thing is um, make sure the note lengths are right. Don't be... It's not that.
Okay, make sure you get that note length right. It's really, really important. It's that, again, it's the, it's the note length, it's the space between the notes that is as important as the actual notes themselves. So if you're not getting the space right, you're not getting the riff right, okay? Oh, what a great riff. And, and then the last thing to look out for is swinging that section. It needs to be, it needs to be straight. Not. Not. It is. You can even get a metronome on as well and just practice with that uh, because that's a great way of just practice sitting and sitting with that click and just being really comfortable with how it feels and how it sounds is really uh, it's really beneficial uh, anyway guys hopefully you enjoyed this lesson go check the track out it's a killer track learn the bass line um, if you haven't been over to Scott's Bass Lessons yet, check out all that we've got going over there. Go check it out. We've got um, the Academy over at Scott's Bass Lessons, which is, in a nutshell, the ultimate online bass school. I teach in there. There's multiple step-by-step -step courses in the course library, which are self-study in terms of they're there all the time. You can go through them. You know, there's, I think, 15, over 15 courses in there right now everything you want to know about bass playing. And then we also do a live stream seminar every Monday with some of the best bass educators on the planet, like uh, Rufus Philpott, uh, Todd Johnson, Danny Mo Morris from Berkeley, obviously, uh, Ed Friedland, Ariana Cat, like just, you know, you name it. We've even had people like Divinity Rocks come in and do one. We've had Sean Hurley that plays with John Mayer. He's done one. So we're getting these you know, amazing bass players also every Monday coming in and doing a live session for you guys. And you can tune in live in real time and ask them questions. I know it's weird. It blows my mind. Technology. I bought my first computer six years ago. You know, I'm just trying to keep up. And um, that's true, actually. And so they're coming in every week. And then we've also got a ton of other things like a play along library. We've got an amazing community in there and stuff like that. I do student review uh, feedback videos every week where people can submit. Hopefully you can submit a video to me and I'll give you direct feedback about your playing and you, what direction I think you should be going in on in and things you can work on. So if you haven't checked out the Academy before, guys, check it out. You can take a 14 day free trial, 14 day free trial and just to see if it's for you. And if and if it's not for you, you can cancel your account within 14 days and you don't get billed. With the click of two buttons, you don't even need to email me and tell me, it's two buttons and it'll be done. So hopefully you've enjoyed this lesson, guys. If you have enjoyed it, share it with your bass player friends, you know, if you've got any. I've got quite a few bass player friends. I think bass players just sort of like congregate together, don't we? You know I mean? We just find each other. It's sort of like a, yeah, we just, wherever we are in the world, drop us in a city and we'll find the nearest bass player, right? Anyway, take it easy. And as always, I'll see you in the shed. Two thousand and fifteen Kickstarter challenge. Hey, everybody. Hey. Hey, everybody. Hi, everybody. Hello, all. Hello.